Hey guys, I wanna give a big shout out to today's video sponsor. You know we need to secure our digital life. When I'm using public Wi-Fi, hotel Wi-Fi at the airport, and most importantly, daily on my mobile device, I need a VPN to secure and then encrypt the data I'm sending. I wanna introduce you to Surfshark VPN. A new feature when using Surfshark VPN is called Hatlock. It provides an extra layer of security. Hatlock scans databases for possible email and password leaks, also providing you, the user, real-time alerts with any personal information that was leaked and found available on the internet. So here's the best VPN deal for my viewers. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.com forward slash Chevy Dude. By entering the code Chevy Dude, you'll get 83% off and one extra month of free subscription. The minimal cost you spend with Surfshark will outweigh the benefits and peace of mind with your personal and private information. Use the link in the description with code Chevy Dude for these amazing savings and thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. We left you last night showing you the black wheels, the yellow calipers and the blue interior. Well, I chased my car down. This guy was gonna sit here and spend the night at the hotel. I'm like, dude, no, no, no. I got plans right now that we gotta get this done. So he just hopped in his truck and we're headed back to Bachman Chevrolet. He's gonna let me take delivery of my 2020 Corvette. Well, welcome back to Kentucky and welcome to a rainy day here at Bachman Chevrolet. Oh my gosh, day 14 of Horngate. Horngate is made up, guys. I know the trolls, I know the haters are out there trying to convince you that my car is being held up intentionally by General Motors because I went down there and honked the horn while it's on its lot. Well, it's safe to say that uh, I've told you guys from the beginning that that is absolutely 100% fake, but it didn't seem like I convinced you. So let's look at this awesome car, guys. There it is. There is my car. Black wheels, yellow calipers. You're going to see the blue interior in a second. I got to Give a big shout out to my boy, Gabe. This is his car. Check him out. Link in the description below on Instagram, car lifestyle right there. And this is my homie. This is my homie, Andrew Zurich right here, who owns CSP up in Pennsylvania. Wait till you see his car. You're gonna see his car on his channel and you'll see Gabe's car on his Instagram and my channel a little bit later next week. I won't reveal their cars until they reveal their cars. But that one right there, I'm excited for this one as well. There it is, guys. You see all these stickers? All of these stickers mean something. This is quality hold stickers. Look at all these stickers. All of them are on there for something reason. And we're gonna get into those a little bit, a little bit later. Look at that, guys. That is absolutely beautiful. Looking at these, if you look at them, I think this is the first load that the silver wheels don't dominate the rest of the wheels. We got the Trident wheels, Spectre Gray, machine face of course we got black wheels we got black wheels we got the silver five spoke wheels we got black five spoke wheels up top andrews has got black five spoke wheels we got black five spoke wheels we have the trident silver wheels and then we have silver wheels up top there definitely the first truck that uh i've seen that uh, the wheels aren't dominant by silver it's kind of interesting all right i'm on my gopro because it's raining out here <laughs> Wait, what was that? Oh my God, did the horn just honk? Oh my God, the horn! And the horn, it works! Does that help? Oh my! Look, I'm not doing it! I'm not doing it! It's not me, I promise! I promise! The horn's just going crazy on this car! Horn gay, day 14. It's all over. All right, so I want to show you guys this real quick. I kind of showed you at the beginning of the video and I shot this on the showroom floor the night before, before I unwrapped it because I didn't want to lose any of this evidence, if you want to call it. So we have one, two, three, four. There was one down here. You can kind of see evidence of that for five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we're over here is 17 dots on this car. Every one of those dots means that is something they checked in quality hold. So you can see that they went over this car extremely well on quality hold and why it was held up and it wasn't because of the horn. I don't know how much more I can stress that. I'll show you a couple of the other cars um, that usually they only have one or two stickers. This car has 17 stickers on it. So they definitely checked it out. All right, so a couple days ago, you guys saw on Instagram in the last video upload that I got the window sticker for the car before I got the car. Well, 
looking over it and closely examining it, I noticed that, and I knew that this window sticker said transmission was made in Mexico. The new window sticker said that it was made in the United States. So I kind of intrigues me a little bit. I need to look more into it. Um, maybe that was the reason. We don't know. Um, I'll update you on that in future videos. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on as well. If you have any theories about why this was held up or um, the transmission information, if you know anything about that, throw it down in the comment section below. All right, so I came out to the other two cars that we got in and you can see there's only one sticker here. This one was built on March 4th, 2020. And then this one over here is Andrews. This is complete street performance vehicle. Uh, you can see that his transmission says Mexico 2. It's kind of tough to see with that rain on there, but there's no stickers on here. Just one sticker and then one sticker up there for quality control. So it's kind of interesting and welcome back to the next morning. I'm excited. We're gonna, my buddy Russell is gonna be here any second now we're gonna load my car on his trailer with the white cover on and we're taking it over to dynasty and we're gonna dyno this thing so i'm good to report i'm gonna you guys are gonna be happy about this i'm gonna do my break-in period correctly so uh an advantage of having my car in quality hold and seeing tj seeing amelia seeing stradman all get service engine lights it's kind of scared me a little bit this is my first supercar and this is a six-figure car so I'm gonna break it in properly, but we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do on the dyno here in a second. All right, we have six miles on this bad boy, so we're gonna put it on the dyno and see kind of what the horsepower is. All right, so they're unloading the truck from the trailer. I'm here at Dynasty in Middletown, which is basically Louisville, right? And uh, we're gonna go in there and we're gonna see how much horsepower this has, but there's a catch. All right, so I just shut transport mode off. The way this works is you have to hit the hazard lights, start the car, hold the start stop button for like almost 20 seconds and that shuts it off. So we're officially out of transport mode, boys. All right, oh, you need to know how to open it. <laughs> hey, look, they got some really cool stuff. I like seeing this, uh, this Gen 6 Camaro here, all, all sorts of stuff. And I never know what people are building and what's secret and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna show you so much stuff, but right there's a dyno, boys. We're gonna find out what this car horsepower has on it in break-in mode so we're not going to put this car over 4,000 rpms and then we're going to come back at 1500 miles once the car's broke in and we're going to find out what that is i know people have done dynos already um but i want to do it showing break-in period we're not going to go over 4,000 rpm and just kind of see what it is just a test right so i really appreciate dynasty for hooking me up and helping me out and doing this for me and guys if you're anywhere in the louisville area uh Hal's an awesome tuner and uh yeah these guys are the ones to use and this is who I'm going to use uh on my Corvette they are the ones who tuned my C7 and put my headers on for that car as well and I gotta tell you I love that car you guys already know that So if you've never watched a dyno before, so basically what he's doing is taking it to 50 miles per hour to sync the dyno and the car together so that way everything operates. So we know, uh, I believe it was Motor Trend did a dyno and they said this car was over 600 horsepower. This is the mistakes that can happen of why you have a car saying, hey, I've got more horsepower um, and whatnot. So he's doing a really good job of syncing it up and we'll just follow it and watch what happens here. Well, we've already got a service engine light on my car. What did you do, Hal's got 14 miles on it, bub. Well, coming straight from the factory, they didn't put much gas in it. When I got over here, it said 41 miles left. Now the low fuel lights on it, so they're uh, gonna throw some gas in to make sure we don't run out of gas on the dyno. All right, here it is. All right, so we hit 298 horse, 402 torque. And we went right to, where's the RPM? 3,800 RPM. So right there, 3,900 RPM, guys. So just shy of 300 at 4,000 RPM. All right, so that's the only one we're doing. We got it in one take, which they're happy because we don't have to do it 30 times. So uh, the official number 
on a six mile car. Well, I guess it's 14 miles now because we were playing around with it on the dyno, but uh, 298 and just a little over 400 horsepower with only using the proper break-in procedure of 4,000 RPM. All right, so we're all done. We're unlocking it. We did this in fourth gear because based off the gear ratio, that's the proper one to do it. This car's got crazy gear ratio. So a lot of times you're gonna see dynos done in fifth gear, but this the way this car is set up, fourth gear was the route. So we'll be back here at 1500 miles and- uh, All right, let's, let's let's open this up. And uh, yeah, I think that'll fit in there really nice. Oh yeah. Uh, we gotta get your mouth. Grab the mouth. It's it's the per it's the perfect fit. No, there's room for two. Oh, we can get two in there. Yeah, absolutely two. Oh yeah, love it. The over 350 torque. So we were just kind of talking off camera about this, and it's kind of interesting. At 2200, is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. We're at we're at 350 at the start torque. Of the run, you're already over 350. Yeah, torque. 350 torque. So that's pretty impressive. You know, we're talking that you know nothing's seated in back here. The rings aren't seated. Nothing. So. Pretty impressive car up front. I know I've said it already, but we'll we'll be back to Dynasty at 1,500 uh, miles, and uh, maybe that bottle will stay in the front. All right, so this is how he's the owner of Dynasty, and uh, I think it's better from him to talk about break-in period than it is from me because he's going to be more on point than my car salesman. No, no idea what I'm doing lingo because we were talking about the seat in and poles and red lights, red lights. So you, you tell them what you think the proper break-in period and the performance engines you build here at Dynasty. Yeah, so in, in my opinion, I just stay away from constant RPM. We talked about road trip, that type of thing to get the miles on it. I'd rather see the thing on back roads, um, basically varying RPM, varying load, maybe not full throttle so much. I know GM's recommending not over four, 4,000 plus. Uh, I, I'd keep the RPM at all different RPMs. And, and some D-cell thrown in there too, maybe some manual mode. So some back road driving, uh, stoplight to stoplight, that kind of thing. Yeah, change the oil to 500, right? I would, you're talking about these things are mating, it's metal on metal that's mating here. That's the break-in. And so let's get that stuff, that stuff's going into the oil. Let's let's get that oil, let's get those contaminants out of there. Yeah, so like GM doesn't, uh, we're talking off camera and I've talked about it in the past videos that GM doesn't say on this car to change the oil at 500 miles where they did the C7, um, yeah. which, Back in the C7, at the first time the car came out, they didn't recommend it either. And then they changed that like a year later or the next model year or whatever. So um, yeah, I've kind of told everybody, change your oil at 500 miles while TJ Hunt came to the dealership when he was driving back to Cali and stuff like that. And yeah, this car will definitely have its oil changed. And I'm glad you set it out there because the contaminants in there are, are huge for the yeah. life of and this engine. And if you are road tripping it, pick some different RPM, some different speeds, some different gears, it's eight speed. Use a couple of the other gears while you're on the highway. So it's not just sitting at one RPM the whole time for, for that break-in period. Also, don't idle it excessively, you know, drive this thing. Awesome, cool, thanks buddy. All right, well, we're leaving. We have 15 miles on the car now. You can see right there, 15 miles. Uh, but just like every other YouTuber, we have service engine lights on. But the good news is these service engine lights should go off like right away. Uh, and self reset because uh, what's happening is the back wheels are moving and the front wheels are not. So that's like, it just makes the car go crazy. Uh, kind of like maybe like if you're underwater and can't breathe, that's kind of what it is doing to this car. It's just going crazy in his brain saying, hey, get me out of this situation and whatnot. All right, we got some good driving, back road driving as Hal said uh, at uh, Dynasty. She's smelling good, boys. I hit her up to about 4,000, 41, 4,200 RPMs, nothing crazy. I used paddle shifting the whole time. And uh, oh yeah, I wish you guys could smell this. This smells really, really good. Uh, but we're gonna have some fun with this car. So if this is the first time that you are seeing my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn all of your bell notifications on, uh, comment down below that you're new. I always read every single comment, usually heart every single comment. And then uh, if you don't, hit me up on Chevy Dude on Instagram. That's the Instagram handle. Guys, thanks again for watching. I'm excited that it's here. Have a great day and drive safely.